welcome back everyone my name is sagar and in this video we will start with abstraction so it is the third main pillar of oops and in java we can achieve abstraction either by using an abstract class or by using an interface so in this video we will learn about abstract classes so let me just tell you so what is an abstract class so this is a special type of class and you can see we can just create an abstract class using this abstract keyword abstract class and suppose i am creating a shape class here so what is this abstract class so abstract means when you search the definition of abstract on the internet so you will find that abstract is something that is imaginary and not in the actual physical form or you can also say abstract is something that is the summary of some another thing okay so this is the exact same thing in our programming so what is an abstract class so using an abstract class we can just define a, some specific guidelines for our children classes so here we will also apply the concept of inheritance so if you don't know about inheritance go watch out our that video first so what are these guideline things so when i am creating this shape class so there i will provide some guidelines that whether a rectangle is a shape whether a circle is a shape so they should follow some rules so what i will do here is i will just define some abstract function and i can also define here non abstract function and that will be here concrete function so in this shape class when i am defining some abstract function so that means they are abstract so they will work as a guideline for my children classes and they don't have a body so obviously they are just like a guideline and that means only the children classes should implement the body of that function so let me just write here abstract and it will just avoid function so let so let me just write here draw so this draw function will be a guideline for my children classes of the shape class so that means whenever any class is extending the shape class so they should implement this draw function and here you can see we are just achieving the abstraction and that means we are defining here a layer that means this will work as a guideline for my children classes so let me just create here a children class so there will be a class rectangle extends shape so rectangle is the kind of shape right so here you can see we are extending our shape class and here we know that shape is an abstract class so whenever we have abstract class so it can or cannot have any abstract method and if there is any abstract method so abstract means suppose it is a guideline so if there is a guideline and we don't have the implementation of that guideline so that means we have to override that function and it is necessary so as you can also see this function don't have any body so whenever we are calling this draw function so it will just give us an error because there is no body of this draw function and for that reason it is now necessary that we have to override this function in all our children classes so here this error says that class rectangle must either be declared abstract so either this rectangle class will work as a abstract class that means it can be also our guideline for children classes or it should implement the abstract method row so let me just override it override this is our word function row so now we have to here override the implementation so here we have to define the body of this draw function so whenever our compiler will just call the draw function so we will just use this body to do something and we don't have to call the parent function because that is obviously abstract so here now that means i can define that rectangle is wrong so here you can see we are only defining here one function and that is your abstract so if you are defining some another abstract function so suppose i am writing here draw again so this should be also overridden in my children classes and suppose this is not an abstract function so now that is not compulsory that we are defining it so we have to here define the body so if there is a non abstract function so that means uh, if there is some concrete method then that means we have to define the body in the shape class itself in the abstract class so let me just write here drawing again and that's it so suppose there is also some another class and uh, let me just copy this so now this will be our circle class so this circle class is also a type of shape and that means this should also have a method of draw because uh, we are defining in our shape class that uh, if there is any shape then that should implement the draw function by itself so that means we can draw circle by its own way and also rectangle so we have to write here circle is drawn and uh, let me now just create an object and so first of all remember that thing that this is our shape class is abstract class and that means it is providing us a guideline so we cannot create object of this shape class because this have no use why we have to create the object of our shape class here we can see their method don't have any body so we cannot obviously create the object of the shape class so what we can do is we can just create a rectangle object and it will be new rectangle and after that i can now just call this draw function and it will just print me this 
so this is a normal thing and we already know this thing from our inheritance video so here i can also do this thing with my circle class so let me just write here points about abstract class so abstract class so the first point is cannot create the instance so instance means this object so cannot create instance of abstract class and after that let me also tell you one thing that we can define here a constructor of this abstract class and uh, you will just say that uh, i may be talking some nonsense i am writing here i cannot create the instance of abstract class but i am saying that we can here define a constructor so this is the constructor of our shape class and you can see there is no error so what is the need of this constructor if we cannot use this constructor to create the object of our shape class and uh, let me just tell you so this constructor will be used when we are creating the objects of our children classes so this is also a very important concept in our inheritance or or we can say in our object oriented programming that whenever we are creating object of our children class so first of all we have to call the constructor of our parent classes so let me just write here uh, shape constructor called okay called and uh, let me also create here a constructor of rectangle class so rectangle and when i am creating the uh, object of this rectangle class so first of all i have to call the constructor of the shape class so you have to follow the hierarchy that first of all parent class constructor will be called so if there is any parent class of the shape class so then first of all that constructor will be called so you have to follow that hierarchy that first of all we have to create the object of our parent classes because uh, there is a case that we can use some things from our parent right so, so that is why first of all we have to create parents and after that we have to create children classes okay so this is a very simple concept and i can just write here rectangle constructor called i hope this spelling is correct so yeah so what we are doing here is first of all we are doing a rectangle and new rectangle so we are creating a rectangle object and we are calling the constructor rectangle constructor so we are here and when we are calling the rectangle constructor and you can see the, this is extending our shape class so first of all this constructor will be called and uh, if there is some field in this class suppose answer and i can just initialize this here answer equal to zero or there is no problem i can also initialize it here so that's totally your choice so let me remove this and now you will see that first of all we are calling this shape constructor and after that this children class constructor this rectangle so you can see here shape constructor called rectangle constructor called and after that we are calling the method of rectangle dot draw so i hope now you understand this thing that this is a very important thing remember that we can create constructor in our abstract classes let me just write it here can create constructors also also i have to write this thing in bracket that used for children classes so you will just get all these files in our java plus dsa repository from our github profile so i will just paste the link in the description so you can just check this out so you will get all the these lectures in that repository so after that let me also tell you that you can also create here final methods so if i am doing this thing final so if it is a final function then that means we cannot override it so if it is a non-final so if it is non-final then we can override this function this draw again in my children classes so override void and draw again so you can see i can override this function because this is normal function in my parent class and i know that if there is function in my parent class then i can override it here so if i am calling this draw again so i will just use this block of code and if i am not overriding it so i will just use this but if it is a final so that means i cannot override this function in my children classes and you can see there is an error so draw again cannot override in this class in this package because you can see overridden method is final so i cannot do this so don't worry we will just learn about all this thing what is this final keyword what is this uh, uh, there is also this static keyword so i will just make a dedicated video for this so also remember this thing that you can create final you can use final keyword in this create final methods okay so you can create final methods in abstract classes 
and also if we are talking about static so we can also create this as static so static means for a brief i can just say that if there's something if if there is any field or if there is any function that is static in some class so then that function or that field so this will be our field or you can say member member of this class so you can initialize or not so if there is something static field or static function in my class so then that means this function or this field is a kind of is a part of our class and not our objects so suppose for our example if i am talking about human class so there is a common property in all humans that they will breathe so we don't have to define that particularly for every human that uh, this human breathe like this and this human will breathe like this so we can just define it as a static property so then that means i can define here suppose for my human class i will just define a static void breathe and after that i can just write here the human is breathing okay so how can you use this static thing so what you can do is so okay i can just show you here inside my rectangle class so what i can access is the shape dot and i can now just access all the static things so this answer is also static this draw again is also static you can see here answer and draw again these both things are now part of this shape class and not the object of the shape class so i can now just use this thing here and uh, and uh, that means whenever i am calling uh, i can just remove this thing whenever i am creating the object of this rectangle class so first of all i will do this that means drawing again and after that i can just print this line so i hope now you understand this thing that we can also write here create final methods and static also we can write here this thing final int answer so this is showing error error and that is because we are not initializing it if there is something final then obviously that means we cannot override it so we have to initialize it so either we can use here any function or this will just return us some value so if it is an integer and we can either use this thing that means we will just get the value of this answer in our runtime or we can just do it in our compile time like this so i hope now you understand this thing that we can also use here final not only methods or also our fields or you can just say members also after this so this was our third property and now let me also tell you one thing that we can just say that this variable is a kind of shape so there is no error here and here we are defining that this is a shape object but we cannot just directly call the constructor of the shape class even when we are defining it here so let me just define it shape constructor okay so we cannot do this thing here shape this is something else so we cannot do it here and it is showing error error and that is because the shape class is an abstract class and uh, i already told you that it is abstract so that means it is used for defining some guidelines for my children classes okay so i cannot do this thing but i can definitely do this either uh, this is a shape class this is a shape object so shape can be anything shape can be either rectangle or it can be also a circle so then now this shape object will be now dependent on this constructor either this shape is a type of a rectangle or a circle so if i am doing this then i can write here either this can be also a circle so there is no error now and i know that this circle class also have this draw method and uh, this rectangle class also have this draw method because this draw method is an abstract method and uh, here you can see this is an abstract method so this should be overridden in all my children classes so if i am doing this thing circle then this will be no error and if i am doing this rectangle so it will be also not an error so i hope now you understand this thing that this is our abstract class and why we are using it here so if you still didn't get it then let me just tell you that you can just create an abstract class to provide some guidelines for my children classes that there is some specific abstract method that you have to use that you have to override and it is necessary for all the children classes that you have to define it in your style that how you can draw something so rectangle will be drawn in its own style and also same for our circle so that is why we can just define here this abstract method and uh, this is not our complete abstraction because uh, you can just see we are defining something here that have their own definition like this so this is our draw again method and it has it has its own definition right so let me also remove this so here we are not achieving our complete abstraction and interface is also something like this and uh, most of the people out there will also tell you that using interface we can achieve our complete abstraction 
but uh, in java 8 or later we cannot do this thing i mean that will depend on your use case but uh, it is not necessary that we can achieve 100 percent abstraction using our interfaces because uh, in the latest version of java there are some feature using which we cannot say that using interface we can just achieve our 100 percent abstraction so don't worry i will just tell you everything about this interfaces and how it is different from this abstract classes so that is it for today everyone if you understand this concept then like this video and do subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching